Good, Good morning, morning church. church. We're the Albuquerque Sisters household. I'm Jasmine. I'm McKenna. I'm Abby. I'm Tanya. We have another sister who will be introducing herself in a bit, but we're super excited to be here this morning. Even though this time of social distancing has been really difficult because we can't meet as a body, we've been given this amazing opportunity to connect with our sister churches all over the region and all over the country via Zoom and live streams, and we're happy to welcome the congregations from El Paso and Las Cruces with us this morning. We wanted to share how we connect as a household with each other and with God. Um, one of the things that we end up doing is we have a quiet time together in the morning. We sit at the kitchen table, play a little bit of music, and just enjoy each other's time um, with each other, of course, and with God. And another thing that we also do is we spend our devos together. We just plug in the Zoom call um, onto our TV, and we just sit here at the living room and just enjoy each other's time. Another thing we like to do is have family nights and movie nights. We also have some good news. Tanya recently got engaged. Woohoo! And we also had a sister recently move here to Albuquerque from North Carolina. Her name is Kyla Hubbs. Be sure to give her a warm welcome when you meet her. Good morning, church. For those who don't know me, my name is Megan. I'm the missing sister from the last clip. I was in Asheville, North Carolina, helping our sister Kyla move out here. So if you haven't met her, definitely introduce yourself. She's awesome. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray for the service. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us just another morning to get up and praise you. Lord, I pray that you are speaking powerfully through the speakers and that the lesson may impact us each individually in the ways that we need it this morning, God. God, I'm grateful that even through this time of COVID and chaos in the world, God, that we can still get together every Sunday as a unified body because of you. God, I pray that this lesson may impact us longer than the hour that it's on, but that we can really carry it with us in our hearts um, throughout our walks as disciples, God, and that we don't take for granted the impact your word can have in our lives. God, I'm grateful for the speakers, grateful for this church and this body, um, and thank you so much for uh, just allowing us to get together this morning. It's in your sons' name I pray. Amen.
Good morning. It's great to be worshiping today with not only Albuquerque, but Las Cruces and El Paso. Uh, excited to be preaching the word here this morning. For those who don't know me, my name is Armin Day, and my wonderful wife Megan and I uh, serve with the campus ministry uh, up in Albuquerque. And uh, before I get into kind of our main topic today, I want to tell you guys a story. Um, I, I grew up playing baseball. I love baseball. Played from, you know, t-ball when I was like four or five years old, all the way through high school. And actually, um, my senior year of high school, our team was really good. We were, um, you know, one of the top ranked teams in the states. And actually, halfway through the season, um, I had one of the best batting averages in the state and actually the best batting average in the city. In, in the paper, they published these statistics. And I remember, um, you know, really feeling excited, like, man, this is my senior year. I'm doing really well. Our team's doing great. Uh, and then if you know anything about baseball, it is so easy to fall into a slump. And so I went from being one of the best hitters in the state, hitting over 500 the first half of the year, to finishing the season, my average was in the 300s. So you know how big of a difference um, that had to be the second half versus the first half to bring my average down that much. And, you know, I started something and I couldn't figure out what was going on. I, I couldn't figure out why I couldn't hit well anymore. And, and I, I went through all these things. Could it be this or that? And, and if you're a baseball fan, you know that baseball players are really superstitious. So maybe it's like the socks I was wearing or did I, did I do, have a different morning routine those days where I was hitting well? Um, all this stuff went through my head. And then, you know, I come to find really late in the season that it was actually basic footwork mechanics. Like where my front foot was landing, I wasn't getting my foot properly down before I started to swing and it caused my, my hips to rotate and my shoulders to rotate. So I, I wasn't uh, getting as much power or, or straight swing, uh, a direct line to the ball like I used to be. And, and I was kind of shocked that this huge difference came from such a small and basic mechanic. But it taught me that Many times, not just in baseball, but in life, the small and basic mechanics are crucial. You know, it's the same way for us spiritually that, that these basic things are so crucial to our spiritual success. And one of the biggest is prayer. You know, prayer is pivotal. But yet, like your front foot when you're hitting in baseball can be so easily overlooked. But yet it affects everything. Prayer is going to affect your peace, your joy, your marriage, your parenting, your evangelism, how you react or respond to things you see on the news. It's all affected by our prayer lives. Prayer is also fragile. Prayer, our prayer lives are affected by everything that goes on in life. I think of, man, just if I have a bad night of sleep or if I'm in a bad mood or social distancing, stress, they all affect the quality and depth of my prayer life. You know, I started quarantine off strong. I was like, okay, I've got this extra time. I'm going to have this great plan and these great goals, and I'm going to grow in my prayer life. Um, I created, you know, I'm going to pray for these different things. I had every day of the week, I was going to pray for something different. Um, and I started off really great. And then, you know what? I just grew weary. I grew tired and fell out of my groove. And I lost motivation and faith. Um, probably about a month, a month and a half ago. You know, I haven't been sleeping well. I felt just emotionally exhausted. Um, we've going, been going through a process of buying a house and all the uh, emotionally exhausted from social distancing and all the racial and social unrest that's going on. Um, and it's affected my prayer life. And, but you know that that's something that Jesus knew was going to happen to us. Uh, in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, it says that Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. I love that, that Jesus told them this parable, and he goes on to talk about the persistent widow, but, but Jesus knew that there was something about prayer and the challenges of life that would cause us to grow weary in our prayer lives. It would cause us to question if God is really listening or if it's even worth it, and so he encourages us to always pray and never give up. And so I want to ask you, how has your prayer life been going recently? My guess is that at some point in the last month or two, if not currently, that you've been like me and, and the challenges that you're facing, uh, the challenges that the world is facing have affected the depth and quality of your prayer life. And that if we could all just take one small step forward in our prayer lives, it would significantly have a positive impact on every area of our lives. And so the title of my lesson this morning is Persevering in Prayer. You can open up your Bible or turn to John chapter 17. 
Um, this has been a passage that's really helped me over the past month as I've wrestled to stay faithful and have a strong prayer life. Um, and so you can turn there. It's where we're going to be going through today. And actually what, what, it, what inspired uh, or what, what brought me back to that scripture is when I started having these challenges in my, in my prayer life, I was talking to my wise and amazingly spiritual wife and uh, I was telling her, uh, maybe I'm not praying enough or praying about the right things or maybe I, I, I need to have a different routine. And I was like, what do you think I should do? And um, she just asked a simple question. Well, why don't you look at what Jesus prayed for and and, and, and maybe pray for those things and see if that helps. And so John 17 is actually Jesus' longest recorded prayer in the Bible. It's uh, the last night of his life. It's during the Last Supper, after he's washed the disciples' feet, after they eat, uh, after his amazing teachings on serving and the Holy Spirit and loving like he loved. He has this amazing prayer for his apostles and us and the world. Um, and so we're going to walk through the scripture, pull out... Uh, some things that, that the pro of prayer Jesus prayed and hopefully we can learn from him and really uh, Benefit our prayer lives this next week So starting in verse 1 of John 17 it says after Jesus said this he looked toward heaven and prayed Father the hour has come Glorify your son that your son may glorify you For you granted him authority over all people that he might give eternal life to all those you have given him Now this is eternal life that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by finishing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew a certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. And glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe, by the name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scripture would be fulfilled. I am coming to you now, but I say these things while I am still in the world, so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word, and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you love me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. So I want to pull some things out of here of John 17 of what Jesus prays. And the first thing that stands out to me is for God's glory. You know, there's nine references to glory in this chapter. Uh, it's something that Jesus prays for here uh, over and over again throughout the chapter. Verse 1 is an example. He says, glorify the Son that your son may glorify you. You know, this word glory, it's a, you know, a, a Bible term that can be hard to understand, but really it just means that when we're glorifying God, we're valuing him or giving him the value that he truly deserves, or we're seeing and understanding his true essence or character. It can also be uh, said as ascribing weight or value to something. And so what Jesus prays is that God would show us who he really is. 
that the world, that we would see his true character and understand God's true value. And that Jesus, about to go to the cross, is about to do that for us. He's, a, he's praying that God would show us who he truly is and, and the vastness of his true value through what Jesus is about to do, which is incredible. And so I want to ask us, what does it look like for us to pray for God to be glorified? It's actually very similar when Jesus teaches us to pray. He says, start by saying, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. It's starting our prayers by re remembering and reflecting on who God truly is. And it's asking that above all else, God, that you would glorify your name in our lives. That our day, that our life would bring you the honor and value that you truly deserve. And so when you pray, do you ask, when you ask for something from God, do you do it to glorify his name or for your own desires or for another motive? You know, after studying this passage out, um, I, I, I was really convicted because I found that I can often pray for good things with the wrong motive. Like an example is, uh, you know, we leave the campus ministry here so I can pray for the ministry to grow. God, please bring a healthy 30 in our ministry. And that's, that's a great thing to pray for. I know God wants uh, everyone to become a disciple. God wants our ministry to grow. But I've got to check my heart. Am I praying for that because I want God to be glorified in the souls of more people? Because I want his kingdom to grow and expand and, and, and reach more people? Or am I praying that to feel validated in my work as a minister? Am, am I praying that so that my name might be lifted up and I might, be, I might gain renown and glory? Because I, after thinking about it, man, I, I can pray that prayer for my own glory and not God's. Or for circumstantial relief. I mean, I think we've all been praying for the coronavirus to just go away and for peace among all this craziness going on or to move forward. But do we pray that for our own convenience? Or are we praying for God to be glorified through everything that's going on in the world right now? And I think, again, that, that one's hard for me. I, I just want it to go away because I want to go back to normal life. But do I have a heart that, God, you be glorified through this no matter what it means? Even if it means something that's harder for me or something that's more uncomfortable for me. You know, James chapter 4, verse 3 says, When you ask, you do not receive because you ask with the wrong motives, that you may spend what you get on your pleasures. When we ask God with the wrong motives, he doesn't answer. And so it's really important for us. It's, it's all about our motivation and mindset going into praying that we learn from Jesus and rewire our hearts and our minds toward God's glory. You know, when we reconnect to that deepest purpose and desires, disciples, that God, I just want to see you glorified and I want to glorify you in my life no matter what that means. Man, our, our prayer lives and, and our lives in general are so much more powerful when we're connected to that motivation. And so my first takeaway for us from learning from Jesus is to pray for God's glory above all else and to check our motives in that for what we're praying for and, and really align our hearts with God's glory. And so the second thing we see Jesus pray for is his re relationship with the Father and our relationship with him. In verse 3, Jesus says, Now this is eternal life, that they know you, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. And then down in verse 24, he says, Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory. And in verse 26, he says, I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have, have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. You know, how hearing that Jesus prays this for you and I is encouraging. That Jesus literally prayed that we would be with him. That he wants you and I in his presence. He wants us to see the full extent of our glory. You know, Jesus desires to be with you. He desires to spend eternity with you. He desires to be intimately involved in our lives every day and right now. I mean, that, that helps me want to pray. You know, it's hard to call somebody when I feel like they don't want to talk to me. But when I feel like I'm calling my best friend and they're going to be excited to talk to me, it's so much easier. And that's who Jesus is when we pray. And 
Jesus prays for our relationship that we would know him. He says that's eternal life, that we would know him and see him clearly. And so I want to encourage us not only to pray for God's glory, but to pray for our relationship with God. That we would know him better and that we would see him more clearly every single day. I mean, this could look like, God, help me to set my heart and mind on you today. Help me to know your love and character better today. Help your Holy Spirit be in me and empower me to be more like you today. This is also a great opportunity to pray for others' relationship with God. I mean, if Jesus prayed for it, it's obviously really important to him. So it should be important to us too. And so when we pray for our relationship, it's a great way to also pray for our brothers and sisters' relationship with God. That they would know God better. That our families or, or friends or neighbors would know God and truly see him. Especially in these times, this is an opportunity for our world to truly know and see God like unlike ever before. So it's something that we need to pray for because Jesus did as well. So Jesus prayed for God's glory. He prayed for our relationship with him. And then he also prayed for our oneness or unity. In verse 11, he says, Holy Father, protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, so that they may be one as we are one. And then in verse 20 through 23, he prays all for unity. He says, my prayer is not for them alone, but for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they be in us so that the world may believe you sent me. I have given them the glory you gave me that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. You know, Jesus, more verses in this chapter are about our unity than anything else. And honestly, that surprised me. Like, if you had asked me in, in Jesus' last recorded prayer, what does he pray for more than anything else? I, I might have guessed something completely different, but it's our oneness and our unity. And so clearly, this was of extreme importance to Jesus. And, and I have to ask myself, and we have to ask ourselves, why is that? And as I began to think about it, it really struck me. Jesus says two things in here, that there's two huge implications to our unity. And the first one's in verse 21. And he says, when, when we are unified, the world may believe that God has sent Jesus. And then in verse 23, he says, when we are completely unified, the world will know that God sent Jesus and loves us, even as he has loved Jesus. And that really struck me that, wow, our unity is powerful. God's plan to reconcile all things to himself hinges on his people being unified. You see, Jesus came to build God's kingdom, to establish his reign and rule here through his people that he left behind, which is us. And if we're supposed to be being the kingdom of God and spreading the kingdom of God, it's not going to work or appeal to anybody, or show God's glory if we're disunified, or, or divided, or if the enemy has a huge foothold there. And I think about, man, look how divided the world is right now, and it really struck me, like, with all the hate, with all the bashing and division and brokenness going on, we have the opportunity, if we are going to be unified, to reflect Christ unlike ever before. Like, the next president, or the next Social movement is not going to figure out how to show the world what unity looks like or what love or peace looks like. But Jesus' people can. If we can figure out how to be racially diverse, how to have police officers and pacifists, how to have you know, every, all these diverse people from both parties together in love and in unity, man, that is the light of the world. And Jesus says when, when we are that, the world will truly know that God sent Jesus, and the world will truly know God's love. And so I want to ask you, are you praying for unity right now? You know, I can pray these short prayers like, God, bring peace to the world, but, but I'm not praying for unity like Jesus prayed for unity. And I, and I want to encourage us, let's be praying every single day as a church and a movement, as, as God's disciples worldwide, that we would be extremely unified. Jesus prays that we would be as unified as he and the Father are unified. And that's, that's unity right there. And so let's be praying and begging God for the wisdom, the patience, 
the love, the perseverance, we need to be unified right now. I mean, our, our unity is being threatened right now by everything going on. These are hard times, and, and, and the temptation can be to disengage or to blame other people. And so we've got to fight for this unity in prayer the same way that Jesus does. And then fourth, Jesus prays for our deliverance and protection from Satan. He says that my prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. You see, Satan, his mission is to steal, kill, and destroy. The Bible calls him the father of lies, and he is at work every single day trying to discourage, disunify, and distract us. And we must pray for our protection and the protection of others. You know, Jesus praying for this reminds me that there's a spiritual war going on. That there's a battle for my heart and your heart every single day. And if we're not praying, engaging our spiritual weapons in that battle, man, we're going to be losing ground. It reminds me that the Bible says that our real enemy is not flesh and blood. It's not, like I mentioned earlier, the other party or these people or those people. It's Satan. It's sin and death. And it's Satan's reign in this world. And prayer is our most powerful weapon against that. And if we forget that, if we stop praying for deliverance from Satan, we're going to misinterpret so much of what goes on in life. We're not going to see, yeah, that's Satan attacking. We're not going to see, man, Satan's trying to grow bitterness in my heart towards this group of people or towards this brother. And when we remember it, we're praying for that daily deliverance. We see things for what they are. We identify the spiritual battle going on, and we are engaging it and protecting our hearts and the hearts of our brother and sister. And so praying for deliverance from Satan is essential to our prayer lives. And finally, Jesus prays for our sanctification. In verse 17, he says, Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. So sanctification just means to be made holy, or to be made like God, to be set apart and different like God is. It's really to be the men and women that God created us to be. And so Jesus' prayer for you and I is that every day that we would be transformed to be more and more like him, that we would be who he created us to be. And so for us, this is something that we need to be praying every day, that God, teach me what you're trying to teach me. That we would have a focus that, man, I'm not just here to go through this world and end up in heaven, but every day, God wants me to be growing and transforming to be more like him. He wants me to be, uh, to be holy and sanctified every day. And it's something we need to be praying for our brothers and sisters. That our small groups, our discipling partners, our Bible talks, our, our churches be sanctified. That, you know, the Bible actually says that it's through hard times that this happens most. And so right now, this is something we need to be praying for each other. That God, you would teach us what you're trying to teach us through this time. That you'd make us holy through these hardships. That we would respond in a way that allows us to grow and be more like you. You know, it's, it's great to have clarity on what God's trying to grow us in and grow others in so we can pray specifically here. You know, sanctification is kind of a broad term, but there's many ways we, we grow to be more like Jesus. And so this is where I pray for the things I'm trying to grow in right now, it's God, help me be godly, content, and faithful. I'm trying to be godly and content with everything going on, but still full of faith, and that's been challenging. But I need to specifically pray those type of sanctification prayers for myself. And this is where it's helpful to, to know uh, the people in your life. Like, hey, what are they trying to grow in? Or what's God trying to teach them? And pray for those things specifically. Jesus desires our growth and transformation. And prayer is key to staying focused and empowered on that journey. And so Jesus here, you know, this is an amazing chapter, and I would encourage you to read through it again yourself, but, but he prays for several different things here. He prays that we would glorify God, or that God would be glorified. He prays uh, that we are for our relationship with him. He prays for our oneness, our deliverance from Satan, and our sanctification. And so my hope is that we would see that prayer is extremely pivotal that it affects every area of our life, and while it's basic, it has a huge impact. And a strong and consistent prayer life can provide us the energy, the focus, and the motivation we need to continue on faithfully as disciples. I know it can be hard to persevere in prayer. Jesus knew that too. 
but I hope that looking at the professional prayer Jesus helps us to have a few extra tools in our tool belt so that we can pray some gross prayers this week as well. So I, I, I hope this is helpful. I hope that this week you can go through these and, and, and pray some things through each of these categories. Uh, and, and if it is helpful, you can go and look at some of David's prayers in the Psalms and Paul's prayers in the, in the New Testament letters as well and just walk through those in the same way and draw out what they prayed for to help you in your prayer life as well. And so I'm going to pray right now to conclude uh, the message and, and lead us into our time of communion. And as I pray, let's remember the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. And not only that he went to the cross, but he did it so that God would be glorified, that we would know who God truly is and his character through the sacrifice and life of Jesus. And so let's pray. Uh, Father, thank you so much for your word and your example. I know I'd be so lost without you, Jesus, and I appreciate how you make things tangible, that we can see and know your character through seeing Jesus, that we can know what you're like, and that we can be empowered to live like you through uh, Jesus' example and the power of the Holy Spirit. I pray, God, that you would empower our prayer lives this week, that you would help us to pray uh, amazing, deep, connecting prayers, that our hearts would be aligned with your glory and our relationship with you, that we would have the right mindset as we pray. And I pray that uh, right now as we take communion, that we would remember and reflect that Jesus prayed all this right before he went to the cross. That he even says in this passage that he does this so that our joy, that his joy might be in us. Help us trust that because of the cross, we know that you have our best interest in mind, that you really truly care about us and love us and are leading us to life to the full, that we know we can trust you because of what you've done. And so thank you, Jesus, for the relationship we get to have with you, uh, for leading us in your path and for dying for us. It's in your son's name I pray.
Hi everyone, my name is Brett. Hi, my name is Devin. I want to say thank you for everybody tuning in to the church service this Sunday. As a friendly reminder, um, you can give to our online homepage, online homepage at abqcoc.com. Again, that's abqcoc.com through PayPal or BillPay. And for our one and only announcement this week, we have Men's Midweek this Wednesday. And uh, that's the conclusion of our service. I just want to thank everyone again for joining in. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Um, I'm just going to close this out in a prayer, and then we'll be dismissed. Bow your heads with me. Dear Lord, I just thank you so much for today, Lord. And I just thank you so much for our means lesson, Lord. I just pray that uh, 
someone can just take something away from this lesson, Lord, that we can just use it to glorify you in every day of our lives, Lord. And Lord, I just pray for this offering, Lord. I pray that uh, it's not our normal offering, Lord, but I pray that we can just still give, Lord, and that we can just see you do immeasurably more, Lord, with the money that we have that we can never do. And Lord, I'm just uh, so thankful for today, and I just pray for the rest of this week. I pray that it's just uh, full of blessings, Lord, and that you just keep everybody safe. In your son's most precious name I pray. Amen.